Hey everyone, back here from Repat here. Today is a very exciting day. Just a couple months ago, I did a part one of, of composting video and I showed and I talked about everything you, you need to know to start your compost. But that is when I just moved into the home and things have been crazy busy. So back in that video, I told you, you know, if you don't have time to start your compost, what you can do is save your compost in, or save your, your, your kitchen scraps, save them and freeze them. They'll be just as good for the compost. So that's what I've been doing for the past two months. I've been saving up all my materials for compost. And today I'm going to show you not only what I've saved up, but we're going to go ahead and start some composting. My composting is going to be way easier than most of the composting you see. We're not going to focus on um, worm co composting or vermi co worm composting like a lot of people do. Of course, worm castings are amazing. But I my composting is basically very quick and easy. So let, let me show you first what I've um, what I've saved up so far. So on that video, I mentioned that eggshells are very um, great for the compost. In a lot of other, you might see a lot of YouTube articles saying eggshells aren't good for the garden or it's not good for compost because they don't break down. But a very good way to get them to break down is what I do is when I use my eggs in the morning, just lightly rinse them. I, all I do is just rest them on my window shelf and by the next day they are they are ready they're all dried and they're ready and then i stick them in my neutral bullet and in just seconds it is like a fine dust so this is actually perfect for, um, for the for the soil or perfect for, for compost what i'm going to do now is add this to my compost and it will much more readily break down the earthworms will be able to eat it and, and get in there and convert that into black gold which is their poop also earthworms absolutely love coffee so what i do every morning is i take my coffee grounds and i dump them into this little jar and the jar is now full so even the paper even the paper um is great for the compost because it breaks down and this coffee ground is packed with nitrogen um i, I didn't mention but the eggshells they are packed with calcium and then let's see what I had in the, so the, so, so to, before I move on, this jar, I just basically kept it under the sink. So because this is an old milk, milk bowl and jar that I, that I um, give my, for my dog's treats, I just keep it. I like it that it, it's covered like this and it's covered tight so you don't smell anything at all. So I keep this under the sink and I just dump into it every day. And, um, and that's it. So let me show you what I saved up from my kitchen straps. So as I mentioned before, um, I put all my scraps, I saved all my scraps in the freezer. So, so you can see it's been two months, so I have quite a bit of scraps. So here, this is actually a jackfruit, piece of jackfruit that I ate today. I love me some jackfruit. So I'm gonna chop this up. One of the things that is a good idea, this is all stuff that came from the freezer. A good idea is when you're composting, before you add it to the compost, you chop it up. So I showed you that on the last video, that I didn't put things in whole, I chopped everything up in, into pieces. That helps it to break down a lot um, better, a lot quicker. So here you can see some more coffee grounds. The paper you don't really have to break up because the paper is gonna break down. I have some peanut shells that I, some peanuts that I ate, and a whole lot of greens. It's still a bit frozen. I'm gonna wait for this to defrost a little bit before I put it in the garden. But you can see carrot bits of carrots. You can see banana peels. And even though it's in the freezer, it's already brown and already, you can tell this is gonna break down really quickly. Bananas break down quickly. They're a great um, source of potassium for our plants. I have a really good variety in here. The reason why it's really great to have a great variety is just like in our diet, if you eat just one kind of food, you're not gonna really get the nutrition. It's the same thing for our, our soil. When you're put, putting this in the soil, you're actually feeding the soil. You don't feed your plants. You feed your soil, you, you make the, the richer, the more nutritious the soil is, the more minerals and everything that breaks down into the soil is the healthier our plants would be. And we are the ones that are gonna be eating the veggies and the fruits, so the healthier it would be. So that's one box. Even the box is, is, is um, the box is also come, um, can also be added to the compost. The box is, is considered a brown. Remember we talked about the browns and the greens. If you missed that video, Hit pause right now and go ahead and check out that video. Everything you need to know about compost. 
everything here will make so much more sense once you see that video because I'm not gonna go through um, over everything that I mentioned there so it's a good idea to, to see that first so we're gonna have that that basket this one I'm gonna chop chop up and the reason why it's great to either chop your vegetables up some people go as far as to put everything in the blender and blend it which is also fine is that it will break down a lot faster and it will be a lot ready to be used in the garden so let's see what else I have so I have quite a bit of bags of um, compost some of it is still frozen, but I want to show you. And then as soon as it defrosts, we'll go back and do this. So this one here. Ooh, let's see what's in this bag. So guys, the reason why it was a great idea to put this in the freezer, can you imagine if I had all these bags of garbage just sitting around the garden? First of all, you would attract a lot of pests and it will be really smelly. So by me sticking everything in the, in the freezer, you know, it didn't lose any of the nutritional value. You can see all my cantaloupes, some tomatoes, some carrots, some um, sweet potatoes, all these different things that I broke down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these defrost. This bag is mainly greens. I'm going to let these defrost. You can see, look at that, guys. Look at all the varieties, sweet potatoes, peppers. A whole bunch of different greens these are the foods that I eat these are the foods that I enjoy and they're gonna go right into the soil to feed the soil so that I can have nice big so that we can have nice big healthy fruits and vegetables this bag has a lot of overripe or well, banana skins full of potassium it's already like breaking apart so these are the banana skins lots of variety so i won't open all the bags they're basically all the same thing this is yesterday's stuff oh there is a little surprise that i have something that i didn't mention on the first um video so what do we have here what is that patrice that looks like hair it looks like hair because it is here yesterday i gave miss storm my dog a trim and that also is going to go on the compost and you're like, but Patrice, that's not food. Hey, it's not food, but it's organic. And the hair actually will break down and feed the soil nitrogen, right? So uh, you, you don't want to put this directly into the garden, although you can, because it also retains, the hair also helps to retain soil moisture. But when you put this into the compost, it will break down. You won't even see it. And it's actually going to feed um, the soil directly with nitrogen. So just looking at all these foods, all the foods that we eat are packed with minerals and nutrients. All those minerals and nutrients, instead of going into the dump, they're going right back into the soil. Then we're going to plant into it. So I have a couple more here, but I won't go through that. This is an old um, cucumber that I forgot to eat. It wasn't back on the fridge, so I'm going to chop this up and stick it in here. And these are my mustard greens from this morning. Um, these are made in the stems. I did a stir fry and had that with my scrambled eggs this morning. If you missed it, that means you're not following me on Instagram. Go check it out on Instagram. All right, so let's see what else we're going to add to our compost. And hey, even this paper towel, it is compostable, right? It's paper and paper is compostable. So that's going to be added. So let's see what else we're going to add to our compost. So we all get a whole bunch of junk mail, don't we, right? So for us, we shred our junk mail because we don't want people to have it known our private business. And this is like the perfect bedding for earthworms. So we're gonna be adding this to the compost. Earthworms love this, and plus it, this all breaks down into soil. You, you don't wanna use shiny magazines or those shiny um, papers, but just plain paper or newspaper are perfect, and, and cardboards are all perfect for compost. So I'm gonna add this, and then one more thing before we go outside. God has blessed me to have a fireplace, so the ashes, wood ash. You don't want to use um, char. You don't want to use charcoal ash. So this wood ash is actually wood ash. It act is actually pot ash, which is potassium. It has a lot of potassium. I heard it even has calcium. It has some phosphorus in there, so it's really good for the plant health. I think. Let me see now. N is nitrogen. It doesn't really have any nitrogen. P is phosphorus. Phosphorus is great for flower production and root development. And then the K is, is the potassium, which is the overall health. So this has a lot of phosphorus 
potassium and it has calcium which is also great for the plant the plant cell structure so i'm adding oops i'm adding a bag of potassium um, of ashes wood ash also you'll see that there are some little chunks here you guys hear all the rage now about biochar and how fancy biochar is and people spend a lot of money this is basically biochar so we're gonna add this this is also good for the for the soil i'm gonna come back in and, and, and scrape off the rest and we're gonna add that also um with wood ash wood ash is great for the um for the garden but you have to be super careful wood ash raises alkalinity the ph of the of the soil so it raises it it makes it more alkaline so for certain plants uh, and certain fruits that we have they don't like alkaline soil soil for instance blueberries you never want to put wood ash directly on blueberries and like your sweet potatoes your regular potatoes never 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 put wood ash directly on them so in order for me to just prevent anything happening what i'm going to do is i'm going to add my wood ash directly to my compost that way everything will break down and you know the earthworms will poop out and it will create wonderful beautiful soil for us that i won't have to worry about putting it directly on my plant so let's go outside and see what else we can add to our compost all right so i'm in the backyard and another great brown um that i'm going to be using is dried leaves this is like a perfect brown so in the first video that we we did I spoke to you about the greens and the browns. So we have this pile of leaves and branches. So this was actually a pile from some bushes that I had on the side. And I asked the landscaper to leave them here. So I won't put the wood on there because the wood would take forever to compost. But I'm going to put the leaves. A great, uh, uh, the leaves and these smaller branches. So a great idea, a great idea is if you have a lawnmower and you have these branches, instead of putting them in like this, Go ahead and just run the lawnmower over it. It'll make it a lot easier to add to your compost pile. And then right here, right over here, we have some hay. So hay is also a great brown. It's, it's also a great brown. Right now it's wet, but it doesn't matter if it's, it's wet. This is also a great brown. And I have some cardboard boxes sitting around. So these are all gonna be a part of my brown. So let's go ahead and start, um, start compiling. So, all right, so the first place I'm gonna start is right, I'm gonna compost directly in my bed. So I know that's not the traditional, but um, I'm not gonna go directly under the plants. You can see tomatoes, we have tomatoes and cucumbers and some greens back there. So I dug a hole, I dug all the way down. You can see where the, there's clay soil all the way down here. So I dug all the way down to the native soil. And I'm gonna, first I'm gonna sprinkle some of my my coffee earthworms absolutely loves coffee and co they, if you sprinkle coffee grounds it actually attracts worms to the area so i'm gonna sprinkle some coffee grounds i know that my soil is almost void of earthworms but because this is a bed where i actually put good soil um there's there there should be some earthworms in there by now so now i'm just gonna ladle directly into the bed you can see I have even did some cardboard. This was a cardboard box that my items were in. All of this is gonna break down. All right, I'm gonna put it probably that much. That's like a couple ladles full. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of my of my um. I'm gonna add some of everything. So I'm gonna add some of my ashes, my wood ashes. I'm gonna add that in, and then. Actually, you can also just add everything to the actual compost, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add my wood ashes here. I'm gonna mix it in. I'm gonna add some more of the coffee grinds directly into the compost pile. You see all this is a paper. My filter, my coffee filters, all compost compostable. Then I'm gonna sprinkle in some of my calcium. I'm not gonna use all my calcium because I plan on using some of my calcium, um, maybe a te half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of calcium around my cucumbers and my tomatoes. Cucumbers and tomatoes um, sometimes get this disease called um, end rot, blossom end rot, where if you ever have a tomato where you see a, like a black spot at the bottom or a cucumber, it's called blossom end rot and it's normally due to a calcium deficiency. And sometimes 
it's not that there's not enough calcium in the soil it's, it's sometimes when the plant is unhealthy it doesn't take up enough calcium so by adding the eggshells and the uh, wood ash this is adding calcium so I'm gonna add a little bit um, of my eggshells here that I'm gonna put some more in the in the bed so because I've already um, added all the ingredients here all I'm gonna do is sprinkle oops a little calcium directly into the hole get some more here and then I'm gonna mix this in mix this up nicely you notice I didn't add any any too much brown because I'm putting this directly into the hole and it has some moisture in it already but it's not overly wet if that's overly wet I would add more paper to it but I'm just gonna leave that here it's not a lot but that will attract worms and that will enrich the soil around it oh what is this hmm. oh it's a soil all right so I'm gonna bury it with all I'm gonna bury it completely because I don't wanna attract any animals. And look at this. Looks like it was a piece of sweet potato that was growing. I did stick a couple potatoes down there. All right, so I'm gonna bury this. And in a couple weeks when I come back, I won't even be able to see anything here. So again, I didn't do, I'm not gonna plant anything directly on here. In a few weeks when I come back and check, what I'll do is take some of that soil and spread it um use it like a top dress i'll mix it up and let's use it as a top dress on the other pants so let me show you what else i do um i'm just gonna empty the rest of this coffee grinds here and then i'm gonna show you how else i compost the next thing i do is i like to compost directly in pots that's what i did in my previous home as i said i had a very very small space a very small space so i couldn't do a lot of composting gonna save the rest of this to use around my peppers so let's let's move on to the next the next um, my next method of composting all right another way this is actually my favorite way of composting and this is the way that I use more often when I was in, in um, the smaller home I compost it directly in pots before I um, plant it into them so what I do here at the very bottom I just put a small amount of, of soil right small amount of soil at the bottom because even though I'm you see me sitting on grass right here and even though I don't see worms there are worms that are deep down into the soil so I put some a little bit of soil at the bottom maybe like an inch of soil and ideally if I if you have coffee grounds you can throw some coffee grounds at the very bottom there so if you look at this you can see it's just a very very small amount that I have at the bottom right these pots all have holes at the bottom so every one of them this one has a ton of holes at the bottom because you need a space you see those holes you need space for the worms to be able to crawl in right so I put my level of soil at the bottom then I'm gonna put some of my paper my shredded paper If you have leaves, you can use leaves. If you have cardboard, there's, this is really not an exact science. This is all gonna become soil. It, it seems impossible. You're like, how can it become soil? It's paper. It's all gonna break down and become soil. So I'm putting my paper here. And what I do is I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna plant into it right away. I'm gonna wait until it breaks down further. Then now, actually let me, my coffee grounds are finished. But I'm just gonna rinse this because you want to make sure that each layer is is moist. So instead of just putting water, I'm gonna actually use some of the coffee water. Ideally, it's good to sprinkle the coffee grounds at the bottom layer to attract the worms. But believe me, the worms will find it. So I'm just lightly making sure everything is moist. Then I'm gonna add some of this compost. <clears throat> And this compost, of course, you know, when you put vegetables in the freezer, it all gets very mushy. So this is all, if you look at it, it's like mush. It's like mush, complete mush. So now I'm going to just shovel some in. And this also has coffee grounds. You see all that brown? That's also coffee grounds. So 
just gonna put a shovel of each and in each um basket in each um container. So this is my way. Um there are dozens of videos on YouTube about how to compost. As far as I'm concerned, there's no right way and wrong way. The, the good thing is that instead of us putting this stuff in the, in the trash and filling up landfills, we are feeding our soil. So as rough as this looks, this is actually going to build up my soil. This is going to attract earthworms into my soil. Um, there's also a method that I mentioned earlier called vermicomposting, where you buy worms. And the worms for vermicomposting or worm farming is different from these earthworms. I'm trying to attract native earthworms into the soil. Um, the, the, the worms that you use for worm, worm composting, if you're trying to get like worm castings, that is called a red, red, red wrigglers. Red wigglers, which are also a form of earthworm, but they're specifically for composting. They eat the compost. They like to stay towards the top while their poop falls on the bottom. With this kind of um, earth, earthworms, traditional earthworms, they like to stay low down. So let's get some more of this in, a little bit more, and then I'm gonna show you my last method. So now that I've put a layer here, see I put it all the way to the bottom. So now I am gonna fill the top up with a little bit of, just a little bit of shredded, shredded paper and then the rest is just going to be soil because one thing you want to make sure if you leave it like this where it's exposed you're going to have um you know rats and raccoons and stuff digging in but if it's all the way deep down they won't be able to, they won't be able to smell it so they won't dig in um another good thing is as i think firm as the the, the um, compost ferments all that juice and all that liquid is going to go down into the soil so it's actually going to enrich the soil so I'm enriching these containers and I can plant whatever I want in the containers directly but this is going to make a wonderful bed after because I'm going to be attracting worms to the bed as well as to the compost and then let me show you really quickly I'll come back and, and fill these up you know, you want to get at least eight inches of soil to, at the very top to make sure that you cover the smell. All right, so really quickly, let's do the panel one. So the panel composting I'm going to do is composting in a trench. And I plan on having, I plan on creating a veggie bed over here, like in a few months. So I started digging my trench yesterday. And what I'm going to do is take the remainder of compost and compost directly in place. So this is when, this is because I'm going to actually allow this bed to rest for several months. So by doing this, the bed, the, all the compost will have a chance to break down and enrich the soil. So let me put this last the compost here. gonna add some water to this and then okay. all right so as you can see guys you can get started right now composting if you even have a little container a little floral pot you can start composting I find that the method I use is convenient for me because I freeze everything and whenever I have time to come out that's when I compost all right so let's spread this out spread this out completely all right so adding what what I have left adding the rest of the paper I'm throwing on some more of my wood ashes And then I'm gonna pile all the soil in. Wait, let me mix it up a bit. I'm gonna mix it up. And 
I want to add a couple of sparkles of the good soil. So I'm going to add a couple of shovels of the good soil. This is full of not just worms, but it has all these microbes and all the goodies. with the soil, with the native soil. And what I'll do is I'll put a couple of stakes on here, a couple of flags. So, and I'll actually date the flag. You can also just put the dates in your phone that you made a compost. And then I'm gonna check back in a month and I'll show you guys what it looks like in one month. Okay, for, so for the last couple ones, I ran out of my kitchen compost. So for the last couple ones, I am going to be using Cersei or bitter melon. I have this growing all along the side of my home, um, side but where the fence is, where I have my guava and my blueberries. There's like a lot of Cersei. Look at all my blueberries, guys. Anyway, um, along here, it's all Cersei. Cersei is, has a lot of medicinal po po um, properties. The Cersei tea is dr drunk a lot by Jamaicans. Um, I can, I'll drop a link uh, um, on the, the benefits of Cersei tea. And also, this is also known as bitter melon in some countries. So anyway, let me show you two other ways you can compost. So the first way is using it as a compost tea. And here I have some seaweed compost tea that I've been brewing for like a couple weeks now. Um, I'm gonna be using this throughout my garden. Seaweed has a ton of nutritional benefits. So I'm just gonna add this. This is all seaweed and water. I'm just going to add this to the compost tea so all the benefits and the nutrition that that is in the Cersei will now absorb into the tea and let me just get something to push it down the seaweed is super stinky right now so super stinky so I'm going to harvest some more Cersei and add it to the tea well this is pretty full so the new the nutrients of the Cersei after like a few days after like a week to two weeks is going to be completely incorporated with the nutrition of the seaweed and i use this in a diluted um, format so this is called compost tea for the seaweed i usually put like one part seaweed to maybe three parts water three or four parts water um if it's if i'm fertilizing the trees i do it like a one-to-one -one ratio but now i'm adding the seaweed to it oh the cersei to it and oh my gosh that stinks so it's even more powerful and i just use this big pot to weight it down there's another way that you can compost so here I added Cersei and some different weeds and some broken twigs to uh, another black pot I'm gonna put this and it had the pot has holes along the bottom I'm gonna put this directly in the soil and sprinkle a little of the native soil on top just a little bit on top then I'm gonna weight this down with another pot. So now, the 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 everything from the lower pot, the compost from the lower pot will eventually break down. The earthworms will come from the soil and go into the pot through the holes that are along the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. Um, this is a great way to compost because you can even compost food scraps like this because animals won't be able to get to it since the compost is at the bottom. Nothing can really. Nothing is really small enough to get in there. I can even fill this in a little bit on the top. But this is not a great way of composting. So as my katuk or tree spinach grows, the roots will eventually go down the bottom. And when I water the plant, my compost on the, underneath is actually, is automatically getting watered. I actually love this method. Um, this is probably one of my favorite methods because as I get more kitchen scraps or, or I, you know, break more leaves toward the garden, I can just lift this up and drop my scraps in, put it back, and we're good to go. Water this and everything below it gets watered. That looks like an astorium. Likely put some more of those um, pots throughout the garden um, with other plants on top. That last method, I'm going to put them toward the garden, especially close to some of my fruit trees. That will help to build up the soil um, throughout the garden. So that is my video for today. 
the multiple different ways of composting. Hope, hopefully there's one or two ways that you can try so you can get composting today. Anyway, till next time guys, go out and plant a seed today. Go out and start your compost. Let's grow and eat our own healthy food. And don't forget to share this video and don't forget to share it with others. Please also follow me on Instagram where I'm now posting basically daily video clips, like very short clips and pictures of what's growing in my garden. Till next time. Bye now.